Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's super special play date. This is our spring fling bonus play date, a chance to meet some of the instructors from spring fling, and then we'll get to know each other a little bit too. And we will do some, um, talk about some basic collage materials and tips and things like that. Um, so I'm going to keep admitting people and I've muted you all right now, just so that I can focus a little bit, um, but general housekeeping stuff. If you have a question, um, especially after I start doing the demo, uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. Cause I won't be looking at what I'm doing and the chat box. If you have questions while the instructors are introducing themselves, um, then go ahead and put that in the chat and I'll try to keep an eye on all of those questions so that, you know, if, if the same people are asking uh, the same question or different people are asking the same question, we'll, um, we'll get all the questions covered. Um, but generally speaking, uh, this is a real casual uh, thing, and we do a free play date almost every month on Zoom. So even if you're not participating in Spring Fling, we'll have something going on that might interest you. And it's a real casual, uh, get to know each other kind of um, way that we can interact. You know, we all interact on social media. But what I love about Zoom is I get to see all of your shining faces and hear your voices and see where you're where you're at. You know, some people are in like fabulous looking little studios and some people are like sneaking onto Zoom while they're at work. And, uh, you know, some people have rooms that they go to to get away from the family while they're Zooming and collaging. And and I love seeing that and being able to uh, to interact with you all that way. Um, I'm going to keep letting people in. And like I said, this is this is not normal for a play date. I usually limit play dates to about 25 people because that's how many people will show up on one screen on Zoom. And that way we can keep it uh, intimate and we can all interact uh, a lot better than when you get into multiple screens and you, you can't see who's talking. And um, so if if you haven't already, um, go ahead and put yourself in uh, speaker view uh, so that you're not distracted by seeing everybody. We'll go back to gallery view so we can, you know, see everybody's faces when, when we're introducing ourselves. But I'm going to start out with introducing um, myself and introducing Collage Lab to you. And then I will talk a little bit about Spring Fling. And we have several of the Spring Fling instructors here today. And I'm gonna let them take a few minutes to talk about their class and get you really excited about that. Um, I would say about half of the participants today are already registered for Spring Fling. So this is like a, a bonus, yay, I'm glad you're here. This is what you're, what you're in for. And there's about half of you that haven't registered for Spring Fling. And you probably have questions and wanna know what it's all about before you decide uh, to commit to spending a month with me and these other instructors. So today, hopefully we will um, get everybody on board and get everybody excited about Spring Fling because it really is right around the corner. Everything starts March 1st. Um, as far as introductions go, I am Kelly Schaub. I am uh, the founder and the, the everything at collagelab.com. I am a one person business. So uh, I, am, I am the social media manager. I am the tech support. I am the, uh, you know, the, the leader of 
the the whole thing. Um, I I do the lessons. I'm my own videographer. I'm my own edit, editor. Uh, I write my own copy. All of that. So um, and and I'm also a collage artist. So I don't just teach. I I, I make collage. I teach locally. Uh, I'm in Rockport, Texas, which is on the Gulf Coast of Texas. We're about 30 minutes north of Corpus Christi beautiful place it was a little chilly this morning it's 70 degrees fahrenheit um right now and i'm enjoying that because we've we've had some very cool nights um so welcome to collage lab some of you are are brand new to uh, to me and i've i've never seen your names before so that's really exciting for me to to see brand new people and i'm just going to give you um a little song and dance a little introduction to what collage lab is and how it got started and what's going on and and also show you some things that that are coming up in the very near future uh, so we're going to talk a lot about spring fling today and spring fling uh, in a nutshell is a a virtual retreat um if if i could have you all down to the beautiful texas gulf coast when it's cold and snowy in most of the rest of the country i would have you here and we'd have a bunch of teachers and we'd hang out for you know three to five days and just immerse ourselves in collage and then go to the beach and go do touristy things but that's not going to happen the way the the world is at the moment so the next best thing is we can get together with people from all over the world and this is something you can do uh, at your own pace when you have time um, you can you can certainly you know do it just in the month of march and just you know immerse yourself but you'll have access to all of these classes through the end of the year so i'll talk a little bit more about that but that's the idea behind spring fling is since we can't get together right now in person i want to give you an opportunity to um to learn some new techniques and try some new things and meet some new teachers um, up until this point collage lab has been all me all the time and you know that's maybe not for everybody so um so a little bit about collage lab um last year or not last year 2020 Wow, we're, we're in 2022 already. Um, in 2020, um, when lockdown happened, I had been scheduled to do in-person classes here and those all got canceled. Exhibits got canceled, pretty much everything got canceled and, and it happened all over the world, y'all know. And I'd always wanted to teach online, but I had never gotten you know enough motivation to actually do it i'd researched it and i had plans and ideas and but i'd never actually done it and so i created uh, a class because i was like if if this isn't the time for it i don't know what is you know if everybody's sitting at home looking for something to do this is the perfect time to make an online class and so i put together a class called g is for grids and it's a free class online do it at your own pace and you've got lifetime access and i put that out in march or april of 2020 and it's still available so if you are brand new to collage lab and after today's play date you want to want to see a little bit more about what collage lab is I, I encourage you to sign up for Gia's for Grids. Um, it's just kind of a fun, relaxing um, way to just play with some collage composition things. Um, so Gia's for Grids was the first online class. 
collage lab, I had actually started something right before the pandemic uh, started shutting things down. And I hosted a scrap exchange where people sign up and I match you with a partner and you send a, a envelope full of fabulous collage scraps to your partner and they send some to you. And then you make a collage using some of the the materials that were sent to you, and we have an online exhibit. And had that in the works at the beginning of, of the pandemic. Of course, we had all sorts of postal delays and you know people that couldn't leave their homes to, to get to the post office. And so we made it just a real, um, you know, no deadlines kind of do it when you can thing. Uh, we've since had a couple more scrap exchanges and online exhibits, and that is a regular feature through Collage Lab. Uh, we've got a very active, supportive, and amazing Facebook group. I love everybody in that group. It's grown to 800 and some people, um, but they are super helpful. Um, we we kind of try to keep all of our posts kind of curated. It's not a it's not a post your art and disappear uh, and just wait for people to like it like a lot of social media groups are. Um, I want you to be more engaged. I want you to get to know each other. So it's a little more curated than your average Facebook group. If you're not a member of it, I, I encourage you to join. Um, and the other fun things that, that we've done at Collage Lab is I've hosted a, um, a challenge every November. We did it um, two years now. We'll do it again this November called Treasure Trovember. And that was just an idea I had where I said, what if we created a collage where we all added the same kind of thing, one thing a day, every day for 30 days? And if you want to see what happens in Treasure Trovember, uh, go to the My Collage Lab Instagram feed and look under highlights. And you will see um, had a, a few hundred people participate this year. And you will see how different everybody's collage turns out, even though we're all using the exact same prompts. It's a really fun challenge. Um, after I launched GS for Grids, I was like, oh, hey, that was fun. Let's do something else. And so I put together uh, what is now kind of our signature course here at Collage Lab. It's called Collage Alphabet. It's a year long pre recorded work at your own pace um, class. It's 26 classes, one for each letter of the alphabet. When you sign up, you get access to the first lesson, and then you get a new one every week for two weeks, every two weeks for a year. Um, so a lot of you are in Collage Alphabet, working your way through those lessons, um, but you have lifetime access. So you can go back. You don't have to commit to, you know, doing it every two weeks. I also have each individual letter from the alphabet. Uh, those lessons are each available now. And I, I'm bringing that up because if you're doing Spring Fling, uh, I've got a special offer on the E is for encaustic lesson. Um, if you've never tried encaustic, which is hot wax. Um, it's, it's something if you if you know me and follow me personally, like on Instagram or Facebook, you'll know it's my latest obsession is working with the hot wax um, and collage. Uh, so E is for encaustic is, is a, a nice introduction. If you've never done encaustic before, if you're curious about the materials and the process and how to set up working with it. And we've got a lesson in Spring Fling. Uh, Tippy Polo is doing a class called Wax On, Wax Off. And it's all about adding texture and really fun stuff to your encaustic collage. So if you want to kind of have the, you know, the prerequisite information when you go into Tippy's class in March, 
um, you can sign up for ease for encaustic and there's a special deal for spring fling people uh, that you can do this class for five dollars uh, the coupon code is wax on w-a-x-o-n and that would be five dollars and you'd have instant instant access to that class um I got to talk faster. So last year I offered um, six different master classes and six different mini classes. This year, as we start to return to a little bit more normalcy, I guess, uh, you know, we, we don't really know what's going on yet in the whole world, but uh, this year I decided to not announce all of those things in advance. But you will see some master classes and mini classes coming up. Collage Biz is another class that, that's available right away. Work at your own pace. My background before starting to be a collage artist about eight, nine years ago uh, was I worked about 30 years for nonprofit theaters, um, mainly in the production and administration side. So the business of art is something I know a lot about and decided to put together a class that was specific to you as a collage artist and what you need to do if you want to take your collage practice to the next level. So that's a class that uh, lifetime access, do it at your own pace. It's designed as uh, a new lesson every week for six weeks, but you can go back, you know, when, when a certain topic is you know, important to you. Oh, what, what was that she said about galleries? And you can go back and look at that. Uh, Collage Lab 101 is a class we offered in 2020 and again in 2021 uh, as a series of Facebook Lives. And I have taken the, the videos from that and made uh, I work at your own pace, Collage Lab 101. If you've done either of the, the live sessions of 101, you don't want this. But if you're new to collage, uh, this covers tools, techniques, materials, and some basics of composition uh, and working with mixed media. Uh, and that's available now uh, to work at your own pace, lifetime access. Um, this year, brand new, we just started this month, is a year-long, uh, I call it a, a collage adventure and kind of a choose-your-own-adventure. Um, we're, all, we're all starting in different places. We're all at different places on our collage journey, and we all have different goals. And Collage Chronicle is, is set up to be uh, a take what you want from it and, and we'll help everybody. It's a small group. We'll help everybody get to uh, their goals throughout the year. It's um, one live Zoom a month, but then there's a lot of other information throughout the month. We've got daily prompts. We've got weekly challenges. Uh, the group is getting together and trading artist trading cards, and there'll be a lot of other activities like that. I'm going to close registration for that at the end of January. Uh, so you, you can still sign up. I'd love to get a couple more people in there uh, before our February Zoom meeting. Uh, so that's still available. Um, in addition to all these things, Collage Lamp has published um, several books so far, uh, Host Three Calls for Collage Art. Um, we've published three volumes of a series I call Art Doesn't Have to Match Your Sofa. Um, and then um, for the last two years around the holidays, uh, I've done a pop-up exhibit in an old phone booth with a, a mail art call, uh, and then also published a book with selected uh, mail art postcards from that call. And then I go ahead and I donate the postcards to, to a local senior living facility. Um, last World Collage Day um, had a, another open call called Think Global, Glue Local, and I had everyone submit round collages, and that was all published in a book, and those collages are also available in an online 
exhibit on the website. And there will be another call this year for World Collage Day. Uh, I, I know what it is, but I'm not sharing yet. <laughs> but I will, I will be letting you know real soon. Um, I'm real excited about that. I'm also doing an in-person um, exhibit uh, locally. Uh, and doing a, a separate collage call for anybody that's local to the Coastal Bend. Um, launched a book club last year. We only had one meeting so far. I'm uh, kind of vowing to try to do that about monthly. So the next book club is January 27th. And we're going to talk about books that we use for uh, getting ideas and inspiration. There's uh, more information on the website about that. It's a free Zoom meeting and real casual. We'll just sit around and talk about books that inspire us. Uh, make sure you are on the email list or you won't hear about all of these things because I'm I'm always thinking of new ideas and, and rolling them out. And that brings me to play dates. And that's what we're here for today. Uh, and the play dates are, uh, like I said, a series of free Zoom meetings, real casual. Sometimes I will demonstrate techniques and materials and answer questions. And sometimes we just have a project that we all do together and chat and talk about. And I'm, you're going to be the first to know uh, the February play date, which will be announced this week. We are going to make ransom note valentines. So start cutting out all those random letters out of magazines. And we are going to have a lot of fun, just a casual play date making our ransom note valentines. Okay, that's me. And that's a little bit about Collage Lab. And I am, like I said, so happy to see you all here. Uh, I'm going to switch over to gallery view so I can see all your shining faces. I'm so happy you are here. And I would love to just introduce you to uh, all of the instructors from Spring Fling that are here today. And I will introduce them. They couldn't all make it, uh, but you'll, you'll get a good cross sample. And if you instructors will just take a couple minutes to talk about your class, I've seen most most of your classes, I've seen snippets of the videos, a few of them I've seen all the way through. I'm so excited about what we're able to offer. And, and, and I want to say one other thing, because I'm getting a lot of people that are looking at Spring Fling that aren't buying it yet. And you guys, it's $100. There's 20 classes. If you do the math, it's five bucks a piece, plus three Zooms that are going to be fun and you get to know each other. And it's, it's so worth it. And I know people are like, well, you know, what's that going to be? These are full length classes. They're, they're about 45 minutes to an hour long, and they're really in depth. And they're, the, these instructors are amazing. They are, uh, I was blown away by the proposals that they put in. And I think we've got a nice cross section of just some fun projects and some technique things and, and just a nice cross section, whether you're brand new to doing mixed media collage or whether you've been doing it for a while and you need some ideas and some, you know, a kick in the pants. I think this is, this is the real deal. And I purposefully made it really inexpensive because I want it to be really accessible. And I want a lot of people to see these other instructors. And, you know, when it's just me, I'm like, yeah, whatever. But I, I, for these instructors, I want them to have like some a lot of people exposed to their artwork 
and to their teaching style and, and to, you know, follow them on social media and check out their websites and buy their art, all of that. So that's, that's why it's only a hundred dollars. Um, so without further ado, I am going to just go through the screen um, and, and pick and introduce um, my instructors. And I'm going to start with Molly McCracken and I'm going to spotlight her. And I'm so excited to have Molly with us. Um, I, 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 I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am. If you follow Molly McCracken on uh, social media, you will see that her brain is so full of amazing ideas and she goes in so many amazing directions and I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you tell everybody what project we're doing in Spring Fling because it's amazing and you're all going to want to go look at Molly's work in this series on her Instagram. Oh, thanks so much, Kelly. Um, I'm Molly McCracken. I'm in Arlington, Virginia, and I'm super excited. When I saw that Kelly was going to do the Spring Fling, I was like, oh, that sounds like so much fun. I, um, I am a teacher here locally too, but with the pandemic, as with everybody, everything's been moved online. So this seemed like a really great fit um, and a really fun way to connect to people. So um, my um, project on Spring Fling is um, from a, a project that I did called Memory Tracings. And I have this little book, uh, it's a figure skating technique book. And I filled it up with, um, a bunch of mixed uh, abstract mixed media collages and so there's one on I don't know, it's not doing a very good job of showing this there's one on every page and um i will walk you through how to make your own um mixed media tracings so um i don't know what else should i say kelly is that <laughs> good <laughs> that's fabulous molly and and there's there's one other piece to the figure skating book is molly used to do figure skating <laughs> and she starts these memory tracing collages with tracing how she remembered her routines and i think that's just like such a creative way to start um, and, and I'm sure we can all think of something in our memories that, that can be that jumping off point. Yeah, it absolutely. It could be like a map, a place you walk to, um, someplace you've driven, something that has like a path. Um, because in figure skating, the tracings are the figure eights that you would do during figures and but my favorite part was always the freestyle spinning and jumping and just flying around the ice so um so that's about it that's that's super and i am so excited but you need to look at molly's instagram and look at those memory tracings because it's so cool so very cool thank you molly Thanks. all right let me look at the gallery view again uh, I am going to introduce you now to Leah Peterson, and Leah is Leah's amazing. Okay, and her her real job is in uh, instructional design. Correct me if I'm I'm saying <laughs> this wrong, but she is in in addition to having that artistic side she also has this very organized methodical side and we were doing a, a zoom session about the alphabet class it was several of us that were taking the alphabet class and leah pulled out this accordion style tracking device that that she had created to not only you know keep track of where she was in the alphabet but to to kind of say 
yeah, I'm not really interested in that project, Kelly, but I, I want to go back and do this one again. And this is a technique that was, you know, presented in this lesson. And I, I you know, I, I want to have that for a reference. And so I'm going to let Leah tell you what her class in Spring Fling is about, because I think every artist is going to benefit from this. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so yeah, I'm Leah and I'm in central Vermont where it's snowing buckets right now. And um, I think mine, I don't know, I'll hear about everybody else's might be the only workshop where we're not actually doing a lot of art, but we're talking about um, how we learn about art from what we're doing and how we're deliberate about our choices so that we're learning what we want to learn and then use what we learn. Um, I think that in mixed media collage, there's just so many choices of different things that you can do and different strategies that you can take that it can be overwhelming. So uh, Kelly mentioned you know, a little alphabet accordion book. I have that here. So actually it'll be one thing that we looked at is this was my little tracking guide for what I was doing in the alphabet. Um, and we're gonna make my, my workshops the first one in the month. So I, I do hope you you start start with me. <laughs> um, and we're gonna make our little spring fling guide. So we'll be ready to take notes throughout the month on uh, all the sessions that you attend. Um, and I have some activities for us to do, and I'm just really excited about it. I actually finished making my class today. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I look forward to uh, doing it all with everybody. Excellent. And I am, I am so excited. I'm sure we've all uh, done that. We've, we've taken a workshop or we've watched a YouTube video and you get this, you know, this technique or this idea in the back of your head. And then, you know, six months or a year later, you're like, oh yeah, I, I did this recently. I took a workshop a year and a half ago um, using resin pours and I played around with it over collage and everything. And decided I was going to do some pieces for an upcoming show. And I didn't take really good notes when I, when I did the resin pour workshop. And so I had to go find some YouTube videos and I had to do this and I had to do that. And I ended up totally ruining the pieces because I forgot an important step. <laughs> so I would have been really well served if I had taken notes and known where to find them and had all those reminders. So we are going to start out the month with Leah's class because I want you to remember where you're getting all these great ideas and learning all these great techniques. Thank you, Leah. Uh, next, I've got, I'm, I'm like, where's, where's the spotlight thing? Um, I'm going to highlight Cheryl McDonald and Cheryl's class is going to be a lot of fun. And Cheryl likes to have fun and I'm going to let her talk a little bit about it. Well, thanks, uh, Kelly. Thanks for this opportunity to create a, um, a kind of like an a experiential workshop in, you know, what do you think about when you're um, trying to reproduce a laugh out loud moment? Um, so that's what my class is called. Um, LOL, your LOL moment. Um, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I had been teaching some workshops, um, basic arts and crafts, and uh, and more recently collage, you know, pre-COVID. And um, so that all kind of stopped. And I, I've just been foc focusing on collage now. But um, I'm in uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. It's very cold out a lot of days so it's a great place to be if you want to stay inside and and just get uh get very uh experimental with different kinds of collage um so to tell you about the class um it's gonna be helping you to understand things that are funny that you, you either see you could read something funny in a book you can watch a funny video you know, you could just like overhear somebody saying something funny and, you know, sometimes you chuckle or you smile and it's amusing and whatever, but to 
like something that just makes you like burst out laughing. I mean, you know, that laughter is the best medicine, you know, and I think more people should, should really do more of it. I mean, I love watching comedies. I love to, you know, have a good time and make silly videos. Maybe you've seen some of my silly videos that I've been posting on my Instagram um, because I just like to have fun and, and play. And um, so this class is going to be helping people kind of like see um, something funny in their world and make an artwork out of it. Um, for, yeah, for example, like, so I, I might be doing a lot of, you know, things around my apartment and, and two hours later, I'll come back and I'll look at this, this, you know, piece of laundry that's on the, on the recliner. I'm like, how did that get there? I literally laugh out loud, but would that make a good artwork? Not really. <laughs> so you kind of have to think about what's really funny to you in that moment and then figure out like, how can you put that down on paper and make it interesting? Yeah, I think, I think we're gonna all end up making some, some really great LLL moments in our collages. Great, thank you, Cheryl. And let me go gallery view and do to do, do next up. You guys, they, they move your faces around. <laughs> um, Susan. Susan is an amazing artist with a, a, a large body of work and works in several mediums. And she is going to teach us a really cool technique. And I'm excited to learn it. <laughs> Want to tell us about it, Susan? Hello, everyone. I'm Susan Brown. Um, my handle online is SB Artist pretty much everywhere except for on Instagram because there's an egghead. I didn't get to using Instagram until late in the game. And there's some egghead who does nail art that doesn't even have a profile picture using my handle. And um, it's just a dead account. So it's uh, sassy eyed Susan on Instagram. Um, so I'm a mixed media artist, like Kelly said, thank you so much. Um, I'm a graphic designer by trade. I worked in the printing industry for um, basically since I was out of high school. Um, I live down in Fort Lauderdale, all y'all freezing. I'm from Chicago. I wanna be up there in the snow. We, we have cool weather today. It, it was 53 this morning here because of that storm front that came through yesterday. Um, we had tornado warnings for like half the day yesterday, which is unusual for this time of year. Usually wow. we get that during hurricane season, but um, it, it was actually sweater weather today. So, <laughs> uh, but it won't be in the next day or two. So um, don't kill the messenger. Um, <laughs> I am a northerner, I'm trapped here. I married a Floridian that was the, I love my husband dearly and we've been together 30 years, but dumbest move in my life because <laughs> I'll never get back to living up north because he can't handle the cold. <laughs> so I'm going to be teaching you because um, I, I pretty much like to do everything. I am a tool junkie. I used to teach for six years in my local scrapbooking store before it closed. Um, I was teaching locally and at the annual trade show, but that hasn't happened. So um, I'm very grateful to Kelly for putting this together because I hadn't been one that ventured online to teach yet only because I've been so busy working because I work doing graphic design during the day. And, um, but I love making faux backgrounds, faux techniques. I love collage, assemblage. I do a lot of photography because I take a lot of photos for what I do for graphic design because stock photography is not cheap. So um, I take a lot of photos for things that we're going to use for printed materials and um, collage. I just love it. It just everything in the kitchen sink can be collage. You can have dimensional things. You can have 2D, 3, 2D things, 3D things. I love to paint. So you can just add everything together and it's just fantastic. Um, I can go through a glue stick faster than a lipstick. I've got a glue stick in every bag. Um, I always have a little pouch. It's got a glue stick, highlighters, the colored pens, and some scissors everywhere I go. I'm surprised. Even up until now, I have gotten through the airport with like these little guys. Nobody stopped me. 
because <laughs> I pretty much take this one with me everywhere I go and it has scissors in it. It, you, it did have an exacto knife in it too, but I took that out. Um, so I'm going to be teaching fabulous faux leather. And this is a really fun technique. And I just, I know there's a lot of variations to it, but I just sort of threw it together and make it my way because I love to recycle and repurpose things in my projects because it's just, I feel, I feel that I'm obligated if I've got something in my possession that I need to repurpose it or be able to recycle it in some way, shape or form. And the thing that's great about the recycled leather is that all this packing material that we get at the holidays, you got what you need. All that brown paper that comes in the packages, the crumpled up, the better. Put some on the side. If you've got the one that looks like newsprint that's a little more white or a little more gray, that's great too, because I'm gonna show you three different ways to make that technique, um, to make that faux background um, and to make it look three different ways. And it's just really fun. It's really easy. It's messy. It's a little fun. You don't need a whole lot of things. You can use what colors you have, what kind of sprays you want and mix everything up. So I'm really excited to teach that. Yes. So, so do not throw away all of your excess packaging. We are going to turn it into leather. <laughs> or, or brown paper bags. You can yeah. use old, old paper bags. You can use regular paper even. Um, whatever you use as a starting base, it's going to alter how it looks. So I have some, I have some examples of things that I've done using them in different ways. Um, you, you might see some of them on things that I've, on projects that I've posted, but I, um, it's, it's been a while. So you might have to look deep for those because those, um, those projects aren't recent, but, um, it's really, it's really, really fun. And you can use these, you can use these fabulous faux leather for lots of different, um, projects and, um, different things in your collage. Yeah, we all we all love a new technique and it's always great when you can use things you already have. So love that idea. Thank you, Susan. All right, next up I have they are, they keep moving your faces around on me. Um, Llewellyn. Llewellyn Joy Miller Guerra is the founder of the, let me see if I get this right, <laughs> the Monthly International Collage Playing Card Exchange. Correct. And Correct. It is a, a force to be reckoned with. It is oh. an amazing group and people can opt in or out every month. So it's not something, you, you know, oh, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to have time to do that every month. Every month you can opt in or out and you create collaged playing cards and send them off into the world and you get a bunch in return. And Llewellyn, tell us about your workshop. Um, I'm going to review how um, the process works with the exchange. And I'm gonna show how the cards are made that I make. Um, I'll just show you a few, whoops, sorry, that I have um, received in the mail and I'll explain how that works. Here's two cards. These are from other people. And the object is to collage, playing, uh, collage onto playing cards. Um, there's about, maybe 280 people in the group and about 80 participate off and on each month. Um, so you're exchanging with no more than a dozen people. Um, and it's an easy process. It's, it's fun. Sometimes it's challenging because the, the substrate is so small, but in other ways it is good to use as inspiration for other projects that you might, you might be stuck. So you can make a little collage on a little card and you can make, you know, you do make the dozen, you can make extras. 
and it serves as inspiration. I've heard people say they're stuck, so they work on the cards, they're stuck on another project. Um, it's just, I love it. It's a lot of fun. I, I haven't counted. I think it's been almost five years now. Wow. Um, I started out with doing a postcard exchange with the same principal. It was a hundred month um, exchange. I'm sorry, I gotta move my camera. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go over in my class. It's, um, it's basic, pretty basic. But there's a lot of variety in the fact that you could do a theme. Sometimes I do 12 different cards that are all different. Sometimes I do like all black and white. I might do, you know, Valentine's Day or it doesn't matter and whatever anyone chooses to do, that's okay too. Um, and then I also, I, I do work full time. I am not working right now. So I'm looking for a job, going on an interview soon um, and soon today. And uh, my art just keeps me occupied and busy and connected to, to the outer world. It's an international collage exchange. So we have France, Canada, um, Germany, Singapore, I'm trying to think of all the countries, uh, the United States, of course, Mexico. Uh, we have some from Alaska, from Hawaii, every other state. So um, I just think it's fun. I, I often wonder what my mailman thinks with me getting all this mail every month from all over the place. Wow. So I, I love it. I've heard that everybody else loves it too. Um, yeah, Claire just said in the comments how, how much she loves it. Claire Standish. Oh, right. She's a regular. Wow. We love having her. And I like, I like um, my group online, um, mostly Facebook, but it's also um, on Instagram is I hear, you know, so many positive feedbacks. It's a positive group. I mean, there's like totally, um, totally, uh, I lost my train oh, of thought. Well, I'm so sorry. Well, it's I'm totally sorry. inspirational. Yeah. Pardon me? Collage artists are amazing. They they really are as far as being a, a really uh, generous, supportive community. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And we've had problems with the post office, um, but everybody knows it. So we just keep plugging along. Exactly. Yesterday, I got a card that was mailed from France that took um, two days to get here. And then I had a card that was from, I think it was Oklahoma, and it took two months to get here. So yeah. everybody, everybody knows that, but I, so far it hasn't discouraged anyone. So I'm happy of that. So hi, I see Amanda and Claire and Susan. Yep. So I'm so thrilled to see you all on here. Lots, lots of people that that participate on and Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah. Yep. So, so thanks everybody. You bet. Well, we're excited to have you. Um, Thank you. With us. And let's see who else is here. Melissa, how are you today? Melissa is, um, Melissa's taken a lot of Collage Lab classes and I've gotten to know her. And like uh, Leah's class, which is going to be right up at the beginning of the month, because I, I feel like some foundational things are, are a really good way to start our month together. Um, Melissa's class will be right after Leah's, and she's going to talk and show us how to, how to work with a daily practice or work our way into a daily practice and in, in our collage. You want to tell us a little bit more about it, Melissa? Sure. I uh, spend my day job helping people figure out the power of the hidden. What's not there that they're seeing, or rather what's there that they're not seeing, both actually. And a lot of what I'm going to do in my workshop is to help you find what is the daily practice that is right for you right now? And so it's a lot about you and this part of your art that is just for you. Doesn't have to have a set purpose, but it can have a set purpose. How do you go about tapping into that part of you and really both rejoicing 
and hating and fear and anything that comes up inside of you as a way to get to know yourself better. Because when you know yourself better, you get to make better choices and you get to make better art, in my opinion. It's not hard. And you'll find that everyone can have a daily practice and you're going to suit it to your needs. And it might just be two minutes a day if that's what you need. And it might be a half hour. And we're gonna talk about all the pieces in between as well as a little bit of inner critic because I want you not to get stopped. So I hope you'll join me. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. And yeah, that, that evil inner critic. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Let's see who else we've got here. Shannon, how are you doing today? Shannon's got... Hi. I would say out of all the instructors that Shannon, your art just stands out as, as really different. You, you have a different approach um, to your, your artistic sensibilities. And I think your lesson is gonna, gonna wake up some people that, that have been doing this for a long time and, and have a different way of looking at things. What do you think? Yeah, that's actually what I, the first thing I wanted to touch on. Um, my work in general uh, focuses on the technique and the practice of like surrealist and psychic um, automat um, automatism. Sorry, I've never said the word out loud yet. Um, so basically what that means is disconnecting your brain from your hand. Um, it's how I have made my work for a long time and that just, you know, these past few years, I've realized that there's an actual word for it. I've gone through years of university work, years of, you know, publications, you know, having my work out there. And I finally figured out what my art style is. And it was kind of a, kind of a revelation and kind of like I felt that nobody um, knew of it anyway. You know, like none of my teachers were like, oh, it seems like your work is, you know, surrealist automatization or, you know, something like that. So it's something that I, I do innately. So basically I, I just work. I don't think about what I'm doing. I just do. Um, when it comes to collage, I find it's a little bit different process from normal collage making where I will cut things out right away and put things together and leave them sit. I'll um, highlight the importance of work in progress. And in my video, I basically go through like, um, I think it's six projects. And of course they're fast. Um, my video it, itself is quite short and it's more like an easy listening kind of podcast type thing instead of like, this is a project we're gonna do today. Here's the you know, necessary tools. It's more of a like a, a thought process. It's trying to like do more, um, you know, a steady paced voiceover work where you can just kind of glance at what I'm doing and just kind of think about how you should stop thinking so much during your work. Um, and like I said, the importance of work in progress. Um, one of the pieces I was working on during my video, I just, I couldn't do anything more with it. I needed to put it away. I needed to put it in, you know, on a, on a table and just leave it for a few weeks. And that's what I did in the video. And so it's like an important process of you know, just leaving things sit, letting your subconscious, you know, mull over it. You know, don't you don't have to finish something, you know, in that session or whatnot. Um, and then just little tricks in between. Um, I am fairly new to collage. I'm an illustrator. Um, and that's the kind of the name of my um, class in general, illustration and collage. So with that, I'll draw something someday just because I want to draw it and I'll leave it sit, like I said. And one day I'll see a piece of thing that I cut out five months ago. And I'll realize that they go together. Yeah. I mean, if that's a weird process, and maybe not everybody has a drawing that has been sitting out for five months, but it's just something that it's a process. You know, it's it's not you know you're gonna sit down for two hours and make a collage. You know, it's it's not like that. Um, little things like always be clipping. Um, I find that um, if you have the stuff ready, you're more willing to create. So if I already have like ten flowers cut out. I'm ready to make something with those 10 flowers. You know, it's easy to assemble, you know, stuff. And that's 
another thing that I'm highlighting is the difference between assemblage and collage, you know, something that I, as like I said, an illustrator, it seems like I'm assembling more than I am collage making at times because collage to me is, you know, cutting out random stimulus and when you're illustrating in collages, you're you're drawing something. So it's just a different process. Um, and um, just little things like blacking out the edges, you know, to make things crisp, because like I said, I'm a 2D artist. I like outline, I like black outline. So when I do collages, I, um, I like to have a firm border around things. Um, and so I'm just a weird artist and I just wanted to share that with the world. And this will be my first teaching thing, doing something on video, and it's the first time I'm capturing me doing art on video. I'm, I'm a kind of secretive artist where I don't like my process because I have weird processes. Um, and this is the first time where you see me painting and um, drawing. So it, it's new for me. <laughs> I think I think that is so exciting. And so, you know, you guys that take spring fling, you're going to be the the very first to see <laughs> this is going to be it's going to be really fun. And I can't wait to I can't wait to see how this turns out. I really am excited about your your work very much, Shannon. Thank you. All right. Let's see who else we got here. We got a lot of instructors here today. <laughs> Nicole, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. And I'm drawing a blank about your class. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'll fill you in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Many Many mixed media art journaling. So my class is going to be all about how I create these little um, mini art journals. And then I'm going to take you through, you know, some of the things that go into this, like some of the collage paper, how to how to make the uh, collage papers, and then walk you through how I take inspiration. Um, I'm a landscape architect by day, and I'm lucky because it's Totally, I'm in upstate New York and it's dumping snow here too. So I'm working from home today, <laughs> lucked out and I was able to be here, um, but I'm very inspired by nature. So um, I'll show you how I take inspiration, turn it into collage papers, and then create these um, mini abstract uh, art journal pages that uh, the, whole, the whole kind of idea behind my class is that, um, you know, if you don't have a lot of time, you can do the all the different parts to what goes into here, you know, in 10 minutes or less, and then have these little journals ready to sit down when you maybe have a half an hour, um, you know, so keeping it small, keeping it manageable. Um, I actually created five of these um, and they were uh, 20 pages each for a hundred day project. And something in my brain does not let me stick with a hundred day project. So I had these laying around I probably, I always last like a week, maybe two, and, and then I stop. But so I had these five journals and I started just playing with them. And I'm like, you know what? These are really fun because they're small. They're only like four and a half by four and a half. Um, and so if I don't have a lot of time, which I typically don't, um, you know, they're nice to do. Like I said, you could just work on, you could just work on the papers um, or just start a page and leave it. So I go into all the different parts, how I break down these journals. And then there's a little bonus video at the end um, on how I make these journals if you don't want to buy a small art journal. So that's that's cool. my class and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited too. I think that's really fun. And yes, I think we should start a club for people that don't get to the 100 days um, right. 100 day <laughs> challenges. I know. It's, I, I'm just not wired that way. I don't know if I'm a rebel or what. It's just as soon as you tell me I have to, I'm like, nope. <laughs> I, I always overcomplicate those things. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, and I need to scan it and post it yeah. in a certain way and a this and a that and I make yeah. it I make it unattainable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this took the pressure away and now they're just fun to do. So Excellent. But. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Um, next up, we have Tippy Polo, who's actually going to be teaching 
two workshops for us. And I mentioned the E is for encaustic as kind of a, a prerequisite or get a jump on um, Tippy's encaustic class. You want to talk about that one first? Sure. Okay. Um, wax on, wax off is um, definitely a an exploration of texture, I guess, is the best way to describe it. And because I have a tendency to work with uh, figurative pieces, uh, these are going to be little portraits, either self-portraits or portraits of other people. Um, just keep in mind that you don't have to actually know how to draw anybody. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways of depicting someone without actually even showing a figure. So don't be intimidated. Don't think you're going to have to be able to do photorealistic <laughs> um, portraiture or anything like that. Um, the wax is absolutely addictive. It is a little, it seems a little complicated and some people are a little intimidated. They think it's, you know, it looks dangerous yeah. um, and because you get a lot of warnings up front. <laughs> um, but I promise it's really, it's really quite accessible once you get past that hurdle. You already know a lot about creating texture and some of those techniques are going to transfer into your wax work. So you know how to use a stamp. It's just using a, how do you use a stamp when you're working with wax? Um, we're going to work on a what they call a cradled board. So if you saw my little sneak peek video, a cradle board is a panel that has sides. So we're going to do one activity on the top of the panel, on the flat portion of the panel, and then we're going to flip it and we're gonna do like a little shadow box effect uh, with using wax and some elements inside that smaller piece. Of the two courses, the wax on wax off is more along the lines of, we're gonna start here, we're going to go through these steps and we're gonna have this end product. Living large is a little bit different. Living li large is a response to the folks that come to me all the time and say, you know, I see all of these huge paintings and these huge pieces and, and I've always wanted to try it, but it looks so scary to me. And I'm, I promise you, it really isn't. <laughs> it really isn't. And right now for various lifestyle reasons, things that have occurred, both good and bad. I am in a tiny little apartment and I promise you that if I can make <laughs> large art in a single apartment with two giant men living with me, <laughs> that you can do it too. Um, we So it's going to be more of an overview. You're not going to really see more of the step-by-step -step from, you know, from here to here to here. It's more things that you need to consider as you're going through your thought process with creating your artwork. Um, things like, what do I do if I don't have the money to go out and pay 60 bucks for a piece of canvas? What do I do if I need have something that's super heavy and I want to display it in the show, but I'm afraid, you know, I'm not sure what kind of framing is necessary to make this work. We're going to go all the way through from, um, from this, uh, making a silhouette. We're going to make a little silhouette activity using no tech, but we'll talk about other ways to scale up your projects. Um, we will also talk a little bit about archival versus non-archival because um, we're going to be doing a sewing activity. When you start to get to a larger size, sewing is a good way to affix some elements um, as an alternative to using glues, which are not always so stable when you start to get heavier things. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll talk a little bit about going beyond even just something on a two-dimensional plane. We'll talk a little bit about living super large <laughs> and going to the third dimension and installation. Um, so it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but since so many of us work small, you know, all of our challenges, you know, you know, a lot of these things are super small. I thought it might be freeing for folks to be, to try just a few instances of trying to do something really big, even if you don't do it on a regular basis, if, even if you don't show it, I think it will inform your your decisions when you go to back to the smaller formats, if that makes sense. I think I think that's really a, a great way to to describe it, Tippy. And and I think I think if we all follow Leah's uh, little <laughs> make a list of techniques and, and all of that, 
I think we're going to, you know, a lot of us get to a point in our collage making where there's going to be an opportunity to do something larger. And there really aren't a lot of um, easy to find resources all in no. one place. No. And so when, you know, okay, you can figure out how to scale this up, but your materials, your weight, and how to hang it, how to present it. I, I think it's something <laughs> that, <laughs> that we're all going to really benefit from just, just knowing that in the back of your mind, because you, you may, you know, I, everybody's different and everybody has different uh, objectives. You may be happy and content making five by seven collages for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And that's, that's great. Absolutely. <laughs> but Absolutely. There, there may come that time where someone says, here's <laughs> a whole wall you have to fill. And that's a lot of little five by seven collages yeah. or just a few larger pieces. Yeah. So, so you'll get to see uh, a little bit about, you know, my primary focus has been kind of in a way an homage to my mother, who was a beauty queen. So you'll see me working on some pieces that are homages that include silhouettes um, and, uh, and, and like life, human size, human oh, size <laughs> torsos. Yep. <laughs> are very close to it in, in instances, but yeah. Very exciting. Looking forward to that so much, you guys. Oh, wow. All right. Who else do we have here as far as instructors? I am looking because they keep moving me around. Do, 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 do. I need to look at page two. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's see. Oh, do, 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 is is Mary Ann still here? I hope I didn't miss her, but I think I did. Let me look through the list of participants it is it's very late at night where Marianne is she is in Namibia which is in Africa and so I did see her log on but I do not see her here anymore but she's got a real treat for you um Abby is, Abby Hong is doing a workshop. She is in the Philippines. And I believe it's like the, it's, it's like Australia for me. So it's like in the middle of the night, whenever I do anything in the middle of the day. So that's why she is not here. Uh, Anna Murfin is doing a workshop on making our own brushes out of natural materials. And she had a dental emergency today. Um, is Darlene here? I thought I saw, well, Darlene might be working. And Liz, I don't see Liz either. Well, that's, that's quite a few of our instructors though. Uh, and, you can see the whole list of uh, classes, the whole schedule on the website. So you can see what other classes we didn't talk about just now in those introductions, but they're all very different, very um, different approaches and techniques. Um, you don't need to go out and buy a lot of uh, new art supplies unless you want to. Most of these lessons are set up to use what you already have, what you already like using. There will be, you know, every instructor I'm sure is going to introduce you to, oh, this is my very favorite thing. That's great, but see how they use it. See if you think it might be your favorite thing before you run to the art supply store and, you know, and buy it. Um, I, I personally go out and buy all of the art supplies when I take a class just because I'm a bit of a, a, a hoarder and have to have all the goodies. But, but most of these classes you can do with real basic kinds of supplies. Um, 
normally during play dates, I do go around and have all the participants introduce themselves. I don't want to take that much time today. I am thrilled that you're all here and we will get to know you. Uh, there are three Zoom sessions that'll be live during Spring Fling. We'll have a welcome session where we all will get to know each other, introduce ourselves, where we're from, where we are in, in our collage making, and what we hope to get out of uh, the Spring Fling workshops. And then in the middle of March, we are going to have a Zoom happy hour. This is, <laughs> this is Kelly pretending we're all... Uh, on an island down here in, in the Texas Gulf Coast, and we're at a retreat, and we're all hanging out at the beach after our after our classes. And so uh, the Zoom happy hour is going to be a lot of fun. I have like Zoom games planned for us, and we will we'll like make them Zoom collage games. It'll be a lot of fun, I promise. And then we will have one big Zoom wrap party uh, to celebrate getting through the whole month and to, uh, you know, thank our instructors and, and all of that. In addition to that, you guys are going to be able to interact with the instructors, even though the lessons are pre recorded. Um, we'll have a private Facebook group where you can, you know, you can post what you're working on from the classes and the workshops and you can ask questions. Uh, not all of the instructors will be in the Facebook group, but if you ask a question and I know that instructor isn't there, I'll reach out to them and get an answer to your question. So, and you'll be able to see what you're, you'll get to know your fellow students. You'll get to see what everybody's doing in the different, um, in the different um, workshops. Um, yeah, Shannon, Shannon's not on social, but but she did put the link to her Etsy shop if you want to see her what what her work is like. Um, thank you for doing that. I'm gonna see if there are any other comments in the chat section. And then I promised you all, and if you have to leave, I understand. If you sign up for Spring Fling, uh, this video of today's Zoom will be available um, when I open up the, the classroom uh, at the beginning of February. Uh, and I'll just say a couple words about that too. Um, all of these videos will be hosted on the Collage Lab website. Um, so like if you sign up for GS for Grids, you will learn how to access your classes on the Collage Lab website. And each, each lesson will be released um, on a separate day in March. There's a, there's a little calendar on the website. March 1st, we get together and we have our Zoom. And then March 2nd is Leah's how to organize yourself and, and get ready for this whole thing. And so each day, um, there'll be a new lesson released with those videos. But actually at the beginning of February, I will open up the floodgates and you can go look at um, all of the information about each of the sessions. So you can, you know, if you're, if you're really interested in doing exactly what Molly is doing in her class, the supply list and that information will be available to you to look at in February. And then her video will be posted, I, I think on the 15th or the 14th, whatever, you know, on, on one day in March, according to the calendar. Um, We'll also open the Facebook group in February and I'll send you a link for that. I'll send you like an overall supply list as well. Um, kind of, these are all of the things all of the instructors are using. Do not go out and buy them all right this minute, but for your future reference, when you, when you wanna say, hey, there was some cool paint marker or something, you can look at that overall supply list and all of that information will be there. Um, okay, let me see if there's one new message. Tippy had to run. Um, and, and all of the instructors, um, I think are, 
absolutely happy to um, to answer your questions. I'm happy to answer any of your questions, but you know, between now and and um, spring fling starting, if you you know if you have any questions about the technical stuff or any questions about specific classes, feel free to ask. Uh, if you're new to Collage Lab, you haven't heard me say this over and over and over again. The best way to get a hold of me is email mycollagelab at gmail.com. I don't always see uh, Facebook Messenger and Instagram messages and, and it's like, or I don't get notifications or I think the notification is because somebody just posted a story that hasn't posted a story in a long time when actually it's a message. <laughs> so email is the best way to get a hold of me and I will, I will give back to you um, rather quickly uh, if it's something I have to research or if I have to, you know, find out the answer to, then, then I will, uh, I'll let you know that as well. Um, Anybody have any, any burning questions about Spring Fling? The next thing we're going to do um, is um, I'm just going to go over some real basics and some basic tools and things that, that will probably help you uh, through most of these workshops. And like I was saying, you can, you can feel free to drop off the Zoom whenever you have to. This recording will be in the, the classroom for you to rewatch if you, you know, if you want to watch the technique kinds of things uh, before you get started, that'll be available in February. So look for that email early February that'll open the Facebook group and give you access to the classes. Um, because I do see, I, I see people dropping off and I, I think we're actually down to like one screen full of people now. Um, so if anybody's got any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and, and shout them out. Otherwise I will start showing you some basics and some materials and tools. Okay, well, let me switch screens here. I'm going to spotlight my messy little work surface over here and step over here. And most of, most of the stuff you're going to be doing in these workshops, first of all, remind yourself these are workshops. These are classes and you're learning and you're not expected, number one, to, you know, to be an expert at any of these techniques or projects the first time you try them. So don't give yourself that expectation of, you know, I I'm going to create a masterpiece right this minute. Uh, a lot of times when I'm working, I just work in a regular old sketchbook. I've just got a bunch of different size mixed media sketchbooks laying around and you know I work in them I, I kind of try to figure out things I play around I sketch I you know look at techniques and materials and how they work um, so you can you can do a lot of these things in a sketchbook you can do a lot of them on just cheap watercolor paper or whatever you have around cardstock, cardboard, mat board, anything like that. I generally use 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It's uh, nice and sturdy. Uh, 300 pound watercolor paper is like super thick and super sturdy, but 140 pound is sturdy. It's going to hold up to not just your um, collaged elements, but you can throw a lot of paint and ink and marker and, and all sorts of stuff at this paper and it's gonna hold up really well. So 140 pound watercolor paper, uh, some kind of sketchbook, just play around. We're not, we're not looking at creating the, the masterpiece right away. Um, cutting tools whatever you're comfortable with. Um, some people use scissors exclusively. 
Some people use X-Acto knives or blades exclusively. Um, there, there may be times then you, that you want to go back and forth between, um, between those things. So you may want to cut something out around uh, your image with scissors, and then you may want to go into a more detailed area and, and cut it out with a blade. Um, I recommend uh, self-healing cutting mat if you're going to be using a blade. This is actually my favorite blade, and I'm much more of a scissors or ripping, tearing kind of girl. Uh, but this is a fingertip control blade, and it just, some people don't like them, and some people do. I, I like the ability to kind of have that blade go exactly where my finger goes, and your finger just goes through the loop, and you've got that kind of control. But... You know, there are other people that, you know, using a blade like this, and it's similar to using a pen or pencil, how you hold it, how you move it. Um, and then there's scissors, and you can get into, you know, fancy scissors, different kinds of scissors, or just plain old scissors. My, uh, my favorite scissors are generally the the pair that I can reach easiest. Uh, I have probably 15 pairs of scissors sitting there in in a bucket. And it's just like, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, those are bigger, okay, or those are smaller. But it really doesn't matter. As long as they're fairly sharp and cut paper, um, whatever scissors you want to use. Um, as far as adhesives go, um, I've done uh, entire play dates a couple different times uh, called All About Adhesives because that is one of the number one questions that, that you get when people start doing collage or they've been doing collage for a while but they don't know if they're doing it right or whatever. Um, people will start out using glue sticks and then they're like, well, everybody's talking about matte medium and gloss medium and how do you use this and how do you use that? Um, these are my two favorite glue sticks, but you find, you know, what works best for you. You may find that um, glue sticks don't, what you're using doesn't stick down well or anything like that. Uh, I love the Elmer's Extreme and the only real trick to a glue stick, and I know this from in-person classes, people are like, okay, um, I'll, I'll just use a little bit of glue on that. No, the trick to a glue stick is you want to cover the entire back of that image. So you want to go past the edges. You want to overlap the edges and cover that entire part. And then when you're gluing down, you want to start like in the center and smooth out. One of my favorite non-art supplies is the old baby wipe. Because if you're smoothing that out and you've got a good amount of glue stick on it, you may be smoothing some of that glue stick or adhesive out along the edges and in general and test your papers first because sometimes that baby wipe is going to take the ink off or smear something um, but I really like having a baby wipe ready all the time and just kind of clean up my sticky messes. Uh, as far as a gluing surface a lot of people a lot of teachers a lot of collage artists just use like a junk mail catalog or an old phone book or something like that to glue on, flip the page uh, when it gets sticky. I have 
discovered that I really like these silicone craft mats. And I'll show you, this is just really thin, flimsy kind of thing. And it's a silicone craft mat. And so when I get glue on it, I just wipe it up with my baby wipe. Um, I discovered these on watching some YouTube videos where they actually like squeeze their paint right on here, mix it on the silicone, use it, and then it just wipes away. So that's what I use for a surface. But like I said, you can use a, a junk mail catalog. You can use um, jelly paper, uh, anything like that. But you don't, you don't want to be getting your glue all over your work surface and then sticking other things to it. Um, so that's the basics of a glue stick. And then we get into matte medium, gloss medium, gel medium, all the mediums. There are a bunch of different kinds of mediums. Um, most popular probably is matte medium and gloss medium. And these are liquid, um, very, very liquidy. And you're going to want to apply this with a brush. I buy pretty cheap um, brushes like at Walmart in bulk. And because I know I will start demoing something and then I will set down my brush full of glue and I'll get on to the next thing and I'll come back an hour later and it'll be just a, a gooey mess. So I buy pretty disposable brushes. I use them for as long as I can. Um, but <clears throat> if you're not like me and you don't walk away from your brush, uh, you can use something like this. This is a brush scrubber. And I've got another one that's actually got a screen on the bottom. This one works pretty well too, though. I just put soapy water in the bottom and enough to go over um, this um, perforated section. And then I take my brush full of gluey stuff. And again, with the baby wipe, the first thing I do is I take that baby wipe and I get as much of the glue off as I can, um, just pulling it off. And then I put it in the soapy water and smush it around on those perforations. And that'll, that'll clean your glue off pretty good unless it's really been hardened on there for a while. Um, so the deal with matte medium, gloss medium, uh, they're both liquid mediums and they're, they're basically designed for adding to acrylic paints, but they work as adhesives also. Not only do they work as adhesives, but they work as um, a, a top coat. So I can use this matte medium, and the only difference between matte and gloss generally is the finish. This is gonna have a matte finish, gloss medium will have a gloss finish. And this is tissue paper, so it's pretty delicate. I'm just going to cover that with the matte medium and glue it down. And I kind of start in the center, mush it all the way out. And actually, this tissue paper was really thirsty and soaked it all up, and there's nothing sticky left. So sometimes your demos don't go as planned. Uh, another thing you can do with the mediums is put glue on the paper you're gluing onto, as well as the image that you're gluing down. And again, we put it down as smooth as we can and smooth it from the center out to the edges. Now, the cool thing about the mediums, in addition to being an adhesive, it can also be a top coat. 
So that is going to protect your paper. And if you don't want to do anything else to it, as far as finishing, you have protected your paper and glued it down. Um, so like I said, not much difference between matte medium, gloss medium, except for the finish. And then we get into the gels. And there are a variety of matte gel medium, gloss gel medium. Uh, one of my favorites is the soft gel gloss. And I'll just open this up and show you. It is about the consistency of sour cream. So it's thicker than these liquid mediums. Um, the gels I find work better for your heavier papers. And like Golden makes um, heavyweight gel and extra heavyweight gel. So if you've got thick, heavy papers and you're attaching them to something like canvas, the heavier gel uh, might be what you're looking for. But we're going to use this in the exact same way we used the medium. Um, let me find something to rip and glue. Oh, this is good. This is this is a thicker cardstock um, kind of paper. And I'm just going to cut a little shape out of it. So this, you know, maybe the glue stick wouldn't hold this down so well. Maybe the matte medium won't hold it down so well. So I'm going to use the, um, the gel medium. And same way, I'm going to coat the back and glue it down. And I can go over it again with the gel. Um, and that's going to, this is soft gel gloss. So that's going to give it a bit of a glossy finish when it dries. The nice thing about the mediums versus the glue stick, the mediums are designed to work with acrylic paint. And so if you are doing a mixed media piece, like I said, with, you know, the watercolor paper being nice and heavy. Uh, if you're going to throw a lot of layers of things on top of that paint and ink and markers and all of that, your mediums are going to hold up to that. Um, there's one other adhesive I want to talk about. It's one of my favorites, too. It's called Yes Paste. And I always describe it as kind of like a glue stick in a bucket. And yes, paste. Let me find. Let me find a credit card. Uh, it's thick. It's um, it is not liquidy at all. It is like a paste. And so let me just show you how thick this is. And I'm going to apply this with either an old credit card, key card, that sort of thing, um, or um, a, a putty knife, something, something kind of rigid. And I'm going to apply that to the back of my image. And I'm going to spread it. And I'm going to spread it thinly. And I know this doesn't show up real well on camera, but it's the same as, you know, spreading your glue stick. It's a little more liquidy than the glue stick, but I want a nice, thin, even coat. And that's, that's covered with the, the yes. And then I'm going to glue that down. And again, if a little bit starts coming under the edges, I'll pull out my baby wipe. Now, the difference between the Yes Paste and say our, our gel medium is this is just an adhesive. This is not something that goes over 
on your top coat. It's not a finish. It will never dry if you put it over your collaged elements. So think of it like, like a glue stick in a bucket. You don't want glue stick on the surface of your image because it's going to be sticky forever. So those are some of the basic adhesives. Uh, other really good tools to have, and I managed to get something all over here. Um, other really good tools to have, I love having a bone folder and you don't need to go out and buy a bone folder. A bone folder is um, a great way to smooth down your papers. It's a great way to make folds in your papers that stay. Um, and, and it's made out of bone. It's hard, it's smooth, but you don't need to go out and buy this. You can also use like the back of the scissors. You can use that to smooth down or burnish down your papers. So something like that, um, the, the back end of um, a ballpoint pen or something, um, you know, use the, use the cap from the Sharpie and you can burnish that down, smooth it down, or you can get a bone folder. Um, Krylon workable fixative. This is something I can't live without. Uh, because I really, really like uh, using some different water soluble uh, things in my practice. And if you're using any kind of charcoal, any kind of pastel, or any kind of uh, water soluble crayons, my real favorite are the Stabilo Woody three-in-ones. Yes, this looks like something you'd buy your kids. It's a big, chunky wood crayon pencil. And it is kind of combination crayon, pencil, and it's water soluble. So if I put some water on it, on a brush or something, I can make that look like watercolor. I can make a wash out of that crayon. My lines can go away if I want, um, or I can apply water directly to the crayon and draw with it and See the softness of those lines when they're wet, or I can smear it while it's wet. And if I let that dry and, and go over it with a fixative, then I can continue to layer without having to worry about it bleeding. So that's a, another good thing to have on hand if you like the water soluble stuff, which I do. Um, other fun things. Um, I'm going to be doing a whole workshop on mark making. And you can pretty much use anything you've got, you know, pens and pencils and uh, crayons, markers. Um, if you haven't found the Posca paint markers yet, you're, you're going to love them. And it's an acrylic paint marker. You do have to shake them up. You do have to, the little tip when you first get it, you have to kind of press it down until the paint starts flowing. But there are different, uh, different widths of the, the pen tip. And that's an acrylic paint marker. And Posca, I like, there are others. That, that you can try. Um, other fun ones, I really like the Uniball Signo pens. Um, I don't have my white ones right here, but it's my favorite white pen. Uh, this one is gold and makes just a lovely 
gold gel uh, line or mark. So those are Uniball Signo pens. And then the, the next most popular question after what glue do you use is how do you finish your collage? And that's really going to depend on what you plan on doing with it, uh, what materials you used, a lot of, a lot of different um, criteria. But a few of my favorites, um, Kamar Varnish is a spray. Um, it's made by Krylon. Krylon's also got a matte finish and a crystal clear finish that's a spray. And you just apply this lightly like you would spray paint. It's non-yellowing and acid-free, protects your work. Um, another route to go is a varnish. Um, this is my favorite varnish. It's a satin polymer varnish uh, with UV protection. And it's a liquid, so I'm going to brush it on over the entire piece and new bottle. And it's just a clear liquid. It'll dry clear. Um, this one's got a satin finish. Uh, it also comes in gloss or matte. And that will protect your papers and, and your collage papers, you know, if they're if they're old vintage papers, um, you probably do want to protect them from further deterioration. We all know how paper ages, changes color, uh, and and starts to break down. So if it's going to be uh, in the sunlight, if it's going to not have uh, some kind of UV glass protection, you may want to protect that with a varnish. And one other um, way to protect your collage is cold wax. Now this has nothing to do with the encaustic wax we were talking about. Uh, it is a mixture of wax and resin but it is used without heat and it is just, I usually just take a paper towel and it is buffed on to the surface of your collage. So like you would wax a car, wax on, wax off. Um, this will give you a nice finish. It won't um, dull your papers, sometimes like your matte medium will give you a, a filmy kind of uh, dull finish. Uh, the, the cold wax, you can barely tell it's there. It's a real light sheen, but it's going to protect your paper. It's going to protect it from a little bit from sunlight. It's going to protect it from dust and dirt uh, and other elements and real easy to apply uh, even over your more delicate papers without discoloring or anything like that. Um, that's what was on my list of things to cover. Do we have any questions about uh, those things or other supplies, techniques, just burning questions? Is anybody still here? Does anybody care? You have to butter it on. Butter, butter, what, what do I have to butter? Susan, are you still here? This isn't Susan, but it was for the glue stick. Oh, okay. Um, butter, do I know what that means? You have to, you have to butter the glue stick on. Butter. I, I don't know that term. To, I say butter it on. You have to give it a good amount. You can't. You just, do. You, you do. Just, you can't just be. I, like I, I, um, I was doing uh, in-person drop-in classes actually down on the island. So these are just tourists looking for something to do for a couple of hours. And these ladies would come in and they'd have the 
the purple glue sticks that the kids use. So you can see how much you know glue you're putting down. It's purple and then it it disappears. And and they were like it, it, they were treating it with like it was gold leaf and just using just the tiniest, tiniest bit of that purple glue stick. And I was like, no, you gotta, you gotta put, you really do need to put a good coating on and you want to cover everything and you really want it to go over the edges because your edges are going to be the first thing that wants to peel up that that wants to you know separate from the paper um so yeah you want to butter it on <laughs> i love that term i've never heard that um Anybody else questions? Questions about spring fling or about the classes or about, about anything you see behind me all for sale? Uh, <laughs> do you guys want spring fling t-shirts? I did not design these. I This was like a promo offer and I was like, oh, I'm just going to get, you know, one t-shirt. But I could totally put the logo on on t-shirts and stuff in my red bubble shop if if anybody is interested otherwise i'm like you know it's probably just me <laughs> any other questions what a great group you guys i'm so happy you joined me today um so good to see uh, new faces and old faces and my instructor faces. And we are coming up on about two hours. And that's probably all anybody needs to listen to me for today. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy you're here. I am so looking forward to Spring Fling. Thank you again to my instructors that were able to be here today. I am so excited for all of your classes. I can't wait. And I am so excited for the students because they are going to get an amazing variety of uh, collage experiences and lessons. Um, Thank you, new to collage. This has helped great, excellent. We try to help. Do let us let me know if you have any other questions. Um, do sign up for Gs for Grids if you're brand new to Collage Lab. Um, do go over to the Facebook group and and um, join that. And I don't know what else to say today, you guys. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Okay. Thank you again for showing up. I look forward to seeing you guys at Spring Fling or anything else that Collage Lab has going on. I appreciate you all and have a great rest of the day. Thank you.